Selamat datang ke ASM Podcast yang dibawakan khas oleh Akademi Sains Malaysia. Siri podcast ini merupakan platform perkongsian topik-topik berkaitan sains, teknologi, inovasi dan ekonomi STIE secara santai dan mudah difahami. Setiap episod akan menampilkan jaringan pakar ASM yang akan berkongsi pengalaman dan pendapat mereka tentang STIE seiring dengan ethos ASM. Budayakan sains, raikan teknologi, cetuskan inovasi. Hello everyone and good day. Welcome to another exciting episode of ASM Podcast where we delve into groundbreaking innovations and celebrate the brightest minds in the world. I'm your host Camila and today I have the honor of speaking with an exceptional individual who have been recognized as the national winner of the 2023 APEC Science Prize for Innovation, Research and Education better known as Aspire. Aspire is an annual award which recognizes young scientists who have demonstrated a commitment to an excellence in scientific research. The award is evaluated based on their scholarly publication and collaboration with scientists from other APEC member economies. Every year, APEC will assign different uh, theme of this award. And as of this year, the theme is inclusive science, technology and innovation for a resilient and sustainable environment. Without further ado, let's join me in welcoming our esteemed guest, the national winner of Aspire 2023, Dr. Lai Chinwei. Dr. Lai, thank you for joining us uh, here today and congratulations on winning the prestigious thank APEC you. Science Prize. So maybe like before we dive into your remarkable achievements, could you please introduce yourself here? Sure. Thank you, Camila, for a very good introduction. Hi everyone, I'm Lai from the of Malaya and today I'm happy to share some information about the nanotechnology for resilience and sustainable environment. Okay, so just a brief introduction about my academic background. I completed my PhD in 2013 okay, in material engineering from USM, Malaysia. And then the same year, I started my career as senior lecturer in UC of Malaya in the department of NanoCAD and then promoted to actually professor in 2021. On professional qualification, I registered myself as Chartered Engineer with the Engineer Council UK in 2000, um, 2017. And then I successfully registered myself Professional Engineer with the title IR with the BM Malaysia in 2018. And then recently, I also registered myself as Professional Technologist, so with the title of TS with the Malaysia Board of Technologies and BOT in 2021. So in addition of that, I was an active member in several professional bodies, including IEM, IMACI, EI, and RSC. Just for your information, my main research interests actually are, are in the nanomaterial design and development, especially applied in various environmental pollution management. And so far, my research work actually has been published in more than 240 um, top tier journals, um, 75 book chapters, 6 patterns, and above 100 international proceedings with the Scopus hash index of 38. So in addition of that, I also secured some R&D research funding with approximately amount of USD $1 million from different resources. For example, at university level, national level, international level, and some of it is from my industry partner. And so far, I am also um, serving as the associate editor guest editor, topic editor, and editorial board member for several prestigious international journals. And I also serve as a book section editor for Encyclopedia of Energy Storage from the Elsevier. And recently, I also published uh, what we call the another books from the Springer Encyclopedia of Green Material. And so far, I completed 10 PhD students and 15 master's students. Okay? And recently, I and my colleague also developed a new module that is Master of Applied Science in Nanotechnology. Actually, this module allows students to gain different perspectives in nanotechnology in various applications. So thank you, Camilla. Wow, that's fantastic, Dr. Lai. At this point, I'm pretty sure that our listeners here are more eager to know which research that has led you to these recognitions. Okay. Um, could you tell us more about your research and how it has revolutionized your field? Okay. And as you're aware that actually today our earth actually is rapidly, rapidly warming, mm -hmm. okay? And water pollution is getting worse. Mm -hmm. And our climate is changing. 
and our earth dimension is rising from time to time. However, our journey is still a long way off in order to get rid of this global warming. So what I believe is that a breakthrough in nanotechnology and nanoscience that will positively affect the living standard of mankind and also reduce the impact of global warming. So I and my team actually discovered that modified TiO2 titanium dioxide nanostructure this photocalysis can be a sustainable material to protect the health and well-being of mankind against deadly infection and environmental pollution. Well, I think like that is very interesting. <laughs> Maybe like uh, until this day, there are a lot of collaboration that you have made so far. So. Maybe you can share with us any collaborative awards that you have received from okay. this research? Okay, due to my dedication towards my research work in nanotechnology and nanoscience, yes, I won several reputed awards um, throughout my academic career, including recently the national winner for the Expire Prize um, 2023, awarded by the ASM Malaysia. And in 2022, I'm the winner for the IMAC Best Young Member Award. And in 2021, I'm the winner for JCI 10 Outstanding Young Malaysian in the category of academic leadership and accomplishment awarded by the Junior Chamber International Malaysia. So in 2019, I'm the winner for National Young Scientist Award in the category of Physical Science and awarded by the Ministry of Energy, Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change, MASTEC Malaysia. And in 2018, I'm the winner for Mass Young Researcher Award. And this award actually is awarded by the Malaysian Solistic Science and Technology Society in Malaysia. And I also win or won numerous awards at um, National Research Carnival, International Technology Expo, as well as um, conferences. And this recognition actually extends to my international cooperator from the Apex member economies, including China, Taiwan, Thailand, Indonesia, and Singapore. In the aspect of, for example, like publication, research grant application, postgraduate student supervision, technical and scientific knowledge sharing as keynote and invited speaker in different conferences, workshop, and seminar. And I also provide my expert and technical contribution as thesis examiner, mm -hmm. grant evaluation panel, secretarial, technical committee member, and reviewer. And recently, I'm just appointed as the foreign expert or professional for the Shanghai Jiao Tong University, China. And it's exciting to see cooperative approach that bring together diverse people or talents being recognized as critical to the innovative and impactful research that we need to address the world sustainability challenge. Mm, that is that is like very great journey, Doctor Lai. Yes. So maybe um, I hear just now that you mentioned about your research that regarding to nano materials, <coughs> right? Yes. So I think some of us like I think it's new mm -hmm. concept uh, sure. today, and maybe you can share what is nano or nano materials. Okay. Yes, I think this is a very good question, Camila. And many people actually are doubt about the definition of nano. Okay, I'm pretty sure that most of the people heard about the terms like the nano white from the domestic product, mm -hmm. nano coating for cars, and some nano spray product for antibacterial or antivirus purpose. So what is the exactly definition of nano or nano product? Okay, in fact, any object or materials with one of its dimensions, either thickness, length, or diameter, so with a size range of 1 to 100 nanometer, it can be considered as nano product or nano material. Oh, I see. And a lot of people also will ask, okay, how small is small? Since we cannot see from our neck eye, right? Okay. So we cannot assume what is the size of nano. In fact, in scientific definition, a nanometer is 1 billion of a meter or 75,000 times smaller than a human hair. Just for your information, our human hair is between 10 to 15 micrometer. So imagine that our human hair cut into a small piece of 75,000 times. So that is the size of nano. Wow, that is very small. Yeah. And I will give another good example to you all so that you all can imagine what is the size of one nanometer. Mm -hmm. So imagine that the earth, our earth compared to a table tennis ball in nanometer scale. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the earth actually is represent to one meter or 100, 100 centimeter. And the type of tennis ball is equal to one nanometer. So that's the size comparison between one nanometer and 100 centimeter. 
Yes. I see. Wow, it is truly impressive, like yeah. how small it can be, right? Yeah, exactly. But I have quite one question here. Okay. So, like, how can this technology reduce the bacteria or virus transmission from highly touched surface? For example, like public transport that's been a daily use for everyone, uh, like MRT or LRT, where there is constantly a new build up microorganisms. I see. Yes, it's another good question, especially during the post COVID era right mm -hmm. now. So, everyone will concern about is it the virus still there? Mm -hmm. And then, how long the virus or bacteria can survive onto the surface? Right. Okay, just for you to measure the global trait from the dangerous mutated virus actually is still not over yet and just for information the material to human transmission is one of the main route for the spread for most of the viruses including the recently mutated COVID-19 virus and another um, harmful virus is called hand foot mouth disease virus this is especially for the kids especially um, below five years old so mm -hmm. they have a high risk um, that will um, infected by this virus we call the hand, hand foot mouth disease virus and another influenza viruses so also very dangerous right now, so we need to be careful. And of course, the high-risk group um, is our young children mm -hmm. and also the older people in our community. In fact, most of the bacteria and viruses can survive onto the outer surface for longer hours, up to 72 hours, mm -hmm. approximately three days. Of course, it depends on um, some environment condition, for example, like high humidity, temperature is low. So this condition actually is um, preferred by the bacteria and viruses, so they can be survived for longer hours. So in general, I think you're also aware that a lot of the conventional chemical disinfectant mm. or the, some, some, some they are using the alcohol, chorus based That's chemical, correct. sodium hypochlorite. So these products actually are very volatile in nature. So in other words, it can be evaporated very fast. Mm -hmm. So for example, alcohol. So when you use it, so it can be very fast and it only will apply for one type of application. Right. So this means that you need to apply regularly. Regularly. Okay, this is very impractical at all. So let's say that you want to wash your hands or apply sanitizer every hour. Yeah. <laughs> so that is very not practical. So alcohol so like can hurt your hands. Yes. Exactly. Your skin. Sure, sure, sure. That's why our team actually come up on um, what we call the innovative method or the technology mm -hmm. by developing a long duration or the long time protection coating layer onto any surface to suppress or reduce the spread of viruses or bacteria as you mentioned just now, the mm -hmm. highly touched surface especially in uh, MRT and LRT mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we can use the PCO technology here um, actually my team is very actively in this technology we name it Protocalysis Oxidation Technology so this technology actually can be applied as self-cleaning antibacterial and antiviral coating layer onto any surface either glass surface, mm -hmm. metal surface, polymer surface, or fabric surface, it also can be utilized, this technology. So as you mentioned just now, um, highly touch surface, um, not only in MRT, LRT, actually for example, like our door button, door handle, mm -hmm. also have a high risk right. for this virus transmission. True. Okay. But I think like just listening to this, I feel secure now. True. <laughs> so what... Um, our team doing is that we are trying to do the surface treatment, as I mentioned just now. Mm -hmm. Utilize the TiO2, the modified TiO2, um, transparent TiO2 nanoparticle colloidal solution for the self clean application and also indoor air purification with VOC reduction application. So, of course, the unique um, the unique feature and the benefit of this newly developed, uh, we call it the transparent nano size TiO2 colloidal solution, is that it might be the safe substance. Okay, mm. so this solution might be safe system and everyone can be utilize it without have any negative impact or side effect and it's safe to our environment. I see. So it's suitable for all types of schemes, yes. yeah. like which concerns a lot of people nowadays. That's why right? we need to select um, carefully what mm -hmm. material we want to be used and what material we want to be utilized. And another um, information I want to share is that TiO2 actually um, is one active ingredient mm -hmm. in a lot of the comestic products. And what pain? toothpaste and also sunblock so oh. the active ingredient is that is common medicine. products yes mm -hmm. exactly that's why we are uh, select this material as our ingredient mm. and then to be applied onto the surface so people are safe and confident with this product and of course this material also have exhibit very high uh, PCO efficiency and responsive to any light and this good thing also must have the self sanitizing ability and it can activate by only visible light, room light, and sunlight. Just for your information, the conventional TiO2 only responsive to UV light. So you need to install the UV light in order to activate it. I see. Yes. Wow. 
That is like that easy, right? Um, yes, it's easy. Now we are using the nano size and then we make our product or the mm. nano size TL2 is responsive to any light. Even though our room light also can be activated oh. the PC erection. Yes. So of course this coating layer must be easy to apply so that it also can be used or can be uh, coated onto any surface. And it must have instant self-binding capability. So it will stick to the surface immediately, mm -hmm. so without peeling off. And of course, um, this coating must be an eco-friendly surface coating method. Not only able to kill bacteria and viruses, as I mentioned just now, but more importantly, it also can improve our indoor air quality and right. reduce the VOC uh, level in our room. That sounds very yes. convenient and like can bring improvement to our exactly. daily life. It is compelling, Dr. Lai. So, as we reaching to a robust ecosystem, mm -hmm. I have a question on how does your research contribute to the development of STI? STI. Yeah. So maybe some of you maybe not understand what it's mean by STI. STI actually is mean by the science, technology and innovation. Yes. Exactly. So my research actually can bring a lot of positive impact for a better living environment as well as promote a great approach towards a healthier environment. Okay. So this is a very crucial milestone actually that embarks our journey to attain some focus pillar in SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals, and the STI development as well. So by improving the well-being for all, okay, and also provide the sanitization facility and promote the hygiene for all people. And I think this, this technology, the PCO technology, as I mentioned just now, mm -hmm. the protocolysis oxygen technology also can provide us clean water and sanitization as well as protect our water-related ecosystem and prevent, preserve our environment as well mm -hmm. using this technology. I see. Okay. So maybe like um, in mm -hmm. terms of application. Application. Yeah. How does it imply or impose to the current situation or any? Is there any uh, strategic partners that have been interested in your research? Yeah, so far we have um, some cooperative projects, especially with industry partners. Mm -hmm. And I think they are started to look into this technology, especially um, during the COVID and also after COVID. So a lot of people are aware that the dangers of this kind of the virus, because we do know that the COVID-19 <laughs> virus, is it will still mutated to another level or okay. dangerous level, so we do know that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the industry, I can say the partner, they are start look into this um, technology. Mm -hmm. So I can say that in future, you can see a lot of um, this product in the market, the PCO product. Wow. Well, having a look with that move, um, many, many people will start less concerning sure. about you, you know, doing the outdoor activities. Yes. Right. Because I always say that uh, prevention is way better than cure. So we need to right. do some prevention step. So in Agreed. order to cure. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So I have one famous question. One famous Usually, question. like okay. people ask to scientists. Sure. So what um, in these days? People like, uh, especially youngsters, Youngster. have less interest oh. in science. <laughs> yes. I think there is a fight, uh, mm -hmm. not only in Malaysia. I think a lot of <laughs> all over the world is of, um, facing this scenario. Mm -hmm. I think um, less uh, youngers mm -hmm. don't like the science. So, so, like, how does you can spark the interest mm -hmm. among them? Okay, in my opinion, I think hands-on activity can definitely spark the student or youngers' curiosity and mm -hmm. interest in science. So I, that's why I always encourage my students, okay, don't just read about the science, but also practice science mm -hmm. and building deep scientific concepts through the hands-on investigation. And yes, it might even trigger visual of experiment, including tools that take a student step-by-step step through the procedure. In fact, investigation and experiment are only a small part of all that can be considered hands-on. So the hands-on can include all the ways like, students interact with the content. For example, like we can dance through the investigation or demonstration, observation of image, some video, some picture, and other primary sources, plus additional interactive activity. I see. Yes. So I strongly believe that by widening the scope of hands-on, the student or younger generation can receive more opportunity to engage in science and engineering practice. Mm -hmm. So in this way, can spark their interest in science. Agree. So that's very fascinating. Yes. Like um, maybe after all this okay. conversation, right? Yes. Many people have been impressed with your True. remarkable journey and the positive change you're making True. through your work. 
So before we conclude, is there any advice you would like to share with aspiring scientists or innovators out there who are listening to our podcast? Okay. Um, I think balancing between work and life is um, my very good that I keep me going and passion in making this a success. In fact, I'm trying to be highly organized. Okay, by having planning done ahead of times and track with deadline. I always aim to stay focused and clear whatever deadline and milestone I set for myself. Okay, in addition of that, in my opinion, having a good time management is another key point that I'm trying to take a control of my time and spend them wisely. Of course, um, the important measures uh, I want to share with the youngest uh, Malaysian or the listener is that never give up and never stop learning, especially mm -hmm. science. I'm pretty sure that um, you definitely will find a way out if you don't give up on something you truly believe in. And of course, learning is a never-ending journey. And together, we save our Earth using nanoscience and nanotechnology. So mm -hmm. with that, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for your inspiring words. Thank you, Camilla. Yeah, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. And I have learned a lot thank more you. about your groundbreaking research. Yes. So we wish you continued success in your all future undertakings of the life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, dear listeners, we have come to the end of the podcast episode. I'm Camila, signing off from ASM Podcast. Until next time, have a great day.